from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering IBM Think 2018. Brought to you by IBM. We're back at IBM Think 2018. This is day three of our wall-to-wall -wall coverage. My name is Dave Vellante, and you're watching theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. A lot of times in theCUBE we talk about how CIOs understood a while ago they just can't take their business and put it up into the cloud. Rather, they have to bring the cloud operating model to their data. So that's a topic that we're going to talk about with Dave Lindquist, who is here. He's the IBM Fellow and Vice President of Private Cloud uh, at IBM. And Ajay Apte, who's a distinguished engineer uh, and, uh, of IBM Cloud Private. Gentlemen, welcome to theCUBE. Good to see you again. Good to see Thank you, Dave. You. So, Dave, let's start with you. IBM Cloud Private, you heard my little narrative at the beginning. Right. I think it's consistent with what you know, your philosophy is, but what is IBM Cloud Private? What's it all about? Sure, well, why don't we first start with, there's public clouds, private clouds, hybrid clouds, and the ability to match your workload requirements with the particular cloud is very important. And having that consistency between private and public, so you have that flexibility, whether it's you know, security, performance, cost, aspects, regulatory, et cetera, is an important part of a multi-cloud strategy. With private cloud in particular, we introduced private cloud, the offering is called the IBM Cloud Private, uh, last year, and the demand has been, it's been through the roof with enterprises. What we're effectively doing is bringing cloud native technologies right into the enterprise. It's really quite cool. We're bringing Kubernetes and containers into the enterprise, optimizing a lot of the core enterprise middleware so it runs on this optimized Kubernetes environment and then integrating it with the security and operational systems of the enterprise. So, you said you only recently really announced IBM uh, Cloud, Cloud Private, Private. And, and you talked about private cloud for years as, as, as did others, but others maybe had an offering, um, but the offering really didn't work. It really wasn't the cloud, yeah. it, was, it really wasn't the cloud experience. Yeah. So, what did you guys have to go through? I mean, it's, it's not trivial. Right. to get that cloud experience. So maybe, Ajay, you can talk about sort of how you got there and what you had to do to get there. Right, so we started with some use cases that we had in mind. So let me talk about some three very core use cases that we started with. The first one is IBM has an enormous enterprise-grade production-ready footprint of middleware in our customer's data center. We wanted to bring that footprint to a containerized world, to a cloud-based operational model. Mm -hmm. right. When I say enterprise-grade footprint that customers have today, they measure the success of that footprint in terms of KPIs, in terms of resiliency, in terms of reliability, uh, in terms of security and compliance, these kinds of things. We wanted to bring the same qualities of services to a cloud private cloud kind of a model in a container world. That was probably one of the main use cases that we were targeting, or that we started targeting. On the other side of the spectrum, uh, the cloud native microservices based deployment. This is where most of the developers are interested in today. This is where really high velocity, agility can be achieved. So that was the second use case that um, we were targeting. In both those cases, the key also is that customers already have existing tools and practices, those kinds of things in the data center. The idea was to very seamlessly integrate into that set of tools and practices and even people within the data center while providing the same cloud operational model. And then the third main use case was around integration. By integration, there are various dimensions to integration. There's integration between the footprint that's running on-prem with the things that are not running in containers. They may be running in VMs or bare metal instances or maybe host systems running on our mainframe like IBM Z systems, right? And then there will be other services maybe running as SaaS services in public cloud. So the integration scenario is basically expanded from our legacy footprint all the way into the public cloud SaaS kind of thing. So that integration was the third use case for us. So those three use cases, I would say, became the foundation of what we did over the last one year. Mm. So Dave, in thinking about you know, bringing the cloud operating model to, to the data, what should clients expect in terms of that experience? Um, is it you know, substantially similar, identical, are there huge gaps? What, what do you tell people? Well, that's, that's a good question. What, what they're going to experience is, when you're using um, cloud environments, public cloud environments, 
what you'll see is here developers get rapid access to the content they need to start developing applications. And it fits very well into their agile DevOps life cycles, high, high iterations. And what you'll see is operations teams, often referred to as site reliability engineering in a cloud model, they have access to all the efficiencies of cloud for deployment, scale, recovery, maintenance, all those types of pieces. So what a customer will experience is we're bringing those capabilities into the data center, but as Ajay pointed out, we're then able to run a lot of the core transactional data, analytic messaging workloads right on, on, on that environment. So the developers get rapid access to that, that type of content, what they need, and the operations can leverage those capabilities uh, of an, on a cloud infrastructure. So that's the experience we're going to get, matching up the enterprise requirements with the cloud native. Is, there, is the impetus to take that sort of, that proprietary data, that 80% of data Jenny Rometty talked about that, that isn't searchable on the yeah. public web, is the impetus to, to, to get leverage out of that data that they don't want to put into the, to the public cloud? Or is it to modernize their applications and cut their costs? And it's probably both, but there I wonder are, if you there, can talk there, to those. There are many higher level type of uh, scenarios and use cases. Mm -hmm. So one that Ajay went through is really modernizing your applications and extending with innovation. But as what Jenny talked about, um, and I think you probably had sessions earlier on IBM Cloud Private for Data, what we're seeing is how we can bring many of the critical data uh, services together from data science experience and data analytics and data governance and movement and management into this cloud uh, technology so that it can be it can be used against the data in that's in the in the uh, in the data center in the, within the enterprise to start getting insights into that data and better you know furthering their business. Ashay, I wonder if you could take us inside the development process, even the thought process behind how you approach this, the secret sauce, how it's how, it, how you approach this challenge maybe differently than historically you've approached system design. Right, so since the whole idea of IBM Cloud Private is around cloud operational model, high velocity, agility, those are the things we are preaching to our customers. The very key principle here is using those in our development as well, right? Our development itself is built on the same open source DevOps tool chains the cloud operational principles, right? So that we can achieve the exact same velocity, agility that our customers are expecting to achieve with the kind of offerings that we are trying to make over here, right? So that's sort of the first key principle for us. The second principle is around production readiness, right? When we are expecting our customers to run production ready workloads with security, compliance, reliability, these kinds of things, the same principles apply back to the platform that they're going to use for running those workloads as well. So the first thing is we are our own customers, right? We have to apply the same principles to our platform so that customers can do the same thing. Our platform is sort of a layered model where we have Kubernetes Cloud Foundry as the containerization model, but we also have a plethora of IBM and non-IBM and open source middleware software that's running on top of that, and then we have customer applications running on top of that, right? So we have to make sure as we build this platform, all these layers are taken care of in terms of how we can deliver a production grade offering end to end. Like when we talk about Watson Studio, which Jeannie mentioned yesterday, running as part of ICP for data, for example. Right? The idea of running that where it's not just about ICP running a database, it's about what happens to the life cycle of that data and how ICP gets designed to make sure the life cycle of that data can be managed in a containerized model. Mm -hmm. right. Those are the kinds of things that became very important for our philosophy. Having a little fun? Our development, our development team rocks. Yeah. They, they, yeah. they are incredible. What, what, what our organization has done is it's fully embraced all the Agile DevOps uh, capabilities. It's uh, all developed on a cloud environment. We actually use ICP in our development, our IBM Cloud Private. Um, it's weekly iterations, two week sprints, and every quarter we have a major release. We've done that the last four quarters, we've had a major release come out. It's really been exciting. So one of the great things about shows like this is that you, you can't walk around without bumping into a customer. Right. Uh, so my question, Dave, is what are they telling you? What's resonating with the customers in terms of the services that they're consuming? What do they like? What do they, what do they want? What are they asking you for? Yeah, so we, um, we did a, what we consider a soft launch in June where we wanted to get some experience and feedback 
from users and operations. And what we actually did is opened a open Slack channel with our users. So we had tens of thousands of downloads that came with that very first, first release. And we got feedback continually on what they liked from content, how they liked the environment, the whole experience. In the beginning of the fourth quarter, we did a major launch with all the middleware capabilities, that content on the, on the, on the platform. It just took off. We, since that time, we, had up, we have upwards of 150 um, global accounts picked up IBM Cloud Private and started and going through the deployment. Some are even going into production. <clears throat> what, the thing that resonates with them so quickly is they have so many existing workloads that they've been trying to really bring into this dev transformation, trying to bring into cloud technologies. And this creates a journey, a path for them through application modernization, and then adding all kinds of innovation with microservices to refactoring, or even adding uh, Watson uh, artificial intelligence services into the environment. Actually, I started off asking you sort of where you got the motivation, a uh, starting point. You, your answer was outside in. You started with the customers, looked at use cases. Having said that, you're trying to replicate, mimic to the greatest degree possible the cloud, public cloud experience. So there's a reference model there. So when you think about what's next, do you sort of hop over to your public cloud colleagues in the IBM cloud and have a little bake off and see, where do you get your motivation going forward, your sort of roadmap ideas? Obviously the customers, but, but, but do you benchmark yourself against public cloud to, to try to close that gap? Well, how do you approach that? Sure, I mean, there are multiple dimensions. Customers, of course, is one of the important ones. Having a consistent story between IBM Public Cloud and IBM Cloud Private is an absolutely key principle for us. It's not just a requirement, but it's not just about keeping them functionally consistent, keeping them experience-wise consistent, but making sure that when customers embark on the journey of hybrid deployment, be it in, the, in terms of doing my dev test in public and then moving to uh, IBM Cloud Private for production, or be it a bursting scenario, these kinds of things. Customers not only want to run their application seamlessly, they want performance, they want network connectivity, they want secure connectivity, these kind of things. So that becomes another angle in terms of how we are growing this. From we have public, we have private, we can build a seamless hybrid story today, but how do we evolve that hybrid story to make sure that we can give them the same qualities of services? Just because you move your application from public, private to public, if your data stays on private, the performance is going to really impact, right? They suffer. How do you make sure that those kind of things are taken care of when customers truly build that? So that's the second dimension of it, that how do we really take the customers on the hybrid journey? And the third important one, is that customers, of course, are going to deploy on our cloud, on other clouds, right? They will always have multiple clusters geographically distributed. How do we manage that entire footprint and give them the right views for deployment, management, accountability, these kinds of things across that entire real estate, right? What we generally call hybrid cloud management, yeah. multi-cloud management. And that's a really fundamental technical challenge, presumably, to cre create that similar you know, capability, that consistency, you know, maintaining performance, a lot, you got a lot of challenges there. Good thing these guys are rock stars. <laughs> All right, Dave, we'll give you the last word. If you had to summarize, think 2018 in, you know, less than 10 words, what would you say? Accelerate your transformation with cloud. That's what I would say. Leverage the uh, technologies across IoT, public, private cloud, AI, uh, blockchain, and accelerate the transformation. Awesome. Ajay, Dave, thanks very much for coming to theCUBE. Good, Good to see you again. Thank you. All right, thanks keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest. You're watching theCUBE. We're live from IBM Think 2018.